you set a date then? What do you mean, set a date? Sometimes I think you just pretend to be slow in the uptake. Aren't you going to congratulate them? Congratulate them? Yes, Bob and Alice. What for? They're getting married. Married? Bob asked me tonight, and I've said yes. So, we're engaged. Engaged? Oh, never mind him. All he's going to do is stand there, bl blethering and repeating everything like a, like a budgie. <laughs> Come on through to the bedroom, Alice. I'm very happy, Dougal. Really, I am. I hope you're not taken aback too much, Dougal. But you must have seen the signs. What signs? Oh, you know. Some things are a bit difficult to hide. Bob Taylor, are you telling me that there is some urgency about this wedding? Of course not. I just mean that I've been hanging about here for weeks, manufacturing excuses, accidentally dropping in. I would have thought my interest in Alice was obvious, even to you. Uh, I knew it would come to this. Well, I hope everything works out. Oh, it will. Have you thought about it carefully? It's a big step. Look, Dougal, I know what I'm doing. I'll look after Alice. You'd better. What do you mean? You're a fisherman. Well, Alice is the best catch you'll ever get in your life. So you just treat her that way, or you'll have me to reckon with. Well, we'll not tangle on that score, Dougal. Yeah, well, just so as you know, Bob. Incidentally, do you know? What? The door to one of your outhouses is open. I saw it in my headlights. Oh, it'll be that feed shed door. The hinge is sprung. I'll have every rabbit in our vein in there. Well, you'll need to help me. Mother, that door's open again. We're away out to shut it. Will you keep your voice down, else you'll be spending the rest of the night getting your son back off to sleep. <laughs> you were saying, Alice? Oh, uh, just that we're in no great hurry to get married. Being engaged makes it official, he says. Uh, what he really means is respectable. Bob's maybe a bit old-fashioned in that way. None the worse for that, though. Besides, you must know by this time that the biggest industry in Glendarach is gossip. There's an awful lot of people here have nothing better to do than talk about everybody else. But now that you're engaged, that'll stop the tongues wagging before they even start. Oh, I suppose so. Bob is very straight, very decent. It worries me. Worries you? But you should be delighted. What is there to worry about? He tends to see things in black and white. With him, him things are either right or wrong. And the more I've come to realize that, the more of a coward I've become. I told you that before I came back here, there was a man in Perth. Yes. Now, that's all I told you. And I've always been grateful that you didn't press me any further. Well, that was none of my business. His name was Mark Stoddart. We, well, we got very involved. It lasted nearly three years. So what happened? He finished it, very abruptly. He must have been a fool. Oh, no. No, I was the fool. He was married. Oh. It's a boring old story. His marriage was on the rocks. He was desperately unhappy, and he was, as soon as he was able to get free, we would make a life together. I believed him. You still feel something for him? Oh, no. No, that's all over now. Even before I met Bob, it was just a, a bad memory. So what is there to worry about? How is Bob going to react when he finds out that his blushing bride-to-be is a married man's cast-off? You said yourself, he's old-fashioned. You've got to tell him. I know. Bob won't like it. I might lose him. Oh, Alice, all this happened long before you even met Bob. But you've got to be honest with him, for your own sake. What do you think he'll do? He'll thank you for telling him if I'm any judge of Bob Taylor. But you remember this. If he gives you up because you go to him and tell him the truth, then he's not worth having in the first place. To to save washing a plate. Mm -hmm. Women can be very hard. <laughs> ah, well, we've had to be, Dougal, to look after great helpless lumps like you. I suppose it didn't occur to you to put on the milk for the cocoa. You never asked me. What did I tell you? Helpless, utterly helpless. You'll have a cup before you go, Bob. No, thanks, Mrs. Lachlan. It's late. Oh, I'll see you off. 
Good night, then. Good night, Bob. And we're delighted with your news. Thanks. You too. When are they getting married? Well, they haven't decided yet. There's no hurry. Oh, well, that gives us some time. What has it got to do with us? When Alice goes, we'll need some help. You can't manage Donald and everything else on your own. She's up. Oh, great. Thanks, Lorna. Problems? No, not yet. Well, most things, prevention's better than cure. With machines, it's not only better, but it's less expensive. And saving money's got a high premium around here. Lorna, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't getting it. No? No, I, I just wasn't thinking. Forgive me. I'm all strung out. I hate being in debt. It's the worst kind of worry there is. It makes you suspicious of everything and everybody, even the people who are trying to help you. You only feel guilty with me because I lent you money. It's a common reaction. Not just you. Any man who is nice to me. I went through 57 varieties of hell with my husband, including money trouble. I swore I'd never be vulnerable again. I suppose it's only natural when you come along and try to help. I wonder why. What's in it for him, I ask myself. Nothing. And drink turned me into a derelict. A lot of people that help me get nothing for their thanks but a mouthful of abuse. If anything else, being a drunk taught me. It taught me to accept help when I needed it. And for someone with an independent streak, it's very difficult to learn. But how can you trust me? I might never repay your money. I've got to trust you. It's the only way I can get you to trust me. Is that important? Yes, it is. Do you still want to meet my mother? Yes, I do. Will you come round for tea? Just tell me when. Come in, Bob. Right on the door, sir. Yes, I got your message. You wanted to see me? Hmm. If it's about the lease on the Finlayson Croft, I'm even more anxious than ever to tie it up. Oh, why is that? I'm just about to join the ranks of the great unfortunates. The what? The married men. <laughs> Alice and I got engaged last night. Ah! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Bob. That's Thanks great news. Ah, she's a lovely girl, Alice. You're a lucky man. Well, I think so. Uh, sit down. I think this calls for a dram, eh? Aye. So when's the big day? Well, I haven't actually decided yet. But apart from anything else, once I get possession of the croft, I want to gut the whole place out. There's no point spending money on furniture and carpets unless you get the basics right first. That's quite habitable, though. Oh, yes, I know. But I want to rewire the whole place, build a decent bathroom on the back. Double glazing would help, too. You're talking about a lot of money. Well, it isn't exactly inexpensive getting married these days. <laughs> Sludge. Sludge. I've still to buy a ring as well. Look, Bob, it's really none of my business, but... Since I do pay your wages, I know that you can't have been stashing it away in sackfuls. I would hate to see you overextend yourself. Well, I'm a pretty careful sort, Mr. McIntyre. I mean, put it this way, I'm unlikely to be getting one of these nasty wee letters from the bank manager. <laughs> no, it's just from uh, what you've been telling me. It seems as if you're about to spend a considerable amount of money. Money that you, well, couldn't possibly have saved from your wages. So I just... So there's more than Maggie Ferguson wondering where it came from. Well, you must admit, Bob, you it must does admit, look... Mr. McIntyre, in Maggie Ferguson's case, I'm not surprised. I'd expect it from her, but not from you. Look, she came to me and told me that she'd seen you down at Carter's Bridge with a poaching net, and a stranger was paying you a wad of money. Now, I'm sure there's a, a perfectly logical explanation. Explanation? I... The only explanation I'm due anyone is this. I've worked long and hard in this estate to produce good, clean water and good, clean fish, and in the process, I've kept my hands clean, too. And if you don't believe that, then you can start looking for a new water bailiff. From what 
what I've seen and from what you've told me, I think you're very well organized. What does Mr. Watson say? Oh, well, I've kept in pretty close touch with him. He seems happy enough. Good. I can't foresee any other problems, can you? Just one. What? Jane Steedman. I thought we'd won our battle with Langham and International. Field Marshal Steedman is occupied on other fronts at the moment. The ski centre, for example. But if you two established your business, and it seemed to be successful, she'll attack. I don't see how. We've been very careful, Mrs. Cunningham. I'm sure you have, Jimmy. But I think that our Miss Steedman wants control of all the Glendarroch Enterprises. But it's our money and our land. We're fireproof. The estate has money. And on either side of you, a great deal of land. What if Jane Steedman had a water sports centre set up in opposition? You wouldn't dare. Well, if I know Langham and International, it's exactly the sort of thing they would do to start a battle. What do you think we should do, Mrs. Cunningham? Look to your flanks, General Blair. Look to your flanks. She'll be crawling now, Grace. And when your feet touching everything, that's a terrible stage. That's when you've got to watch them. Mind you, Isabel, I'm used to it. I've still got Dougal under my feet, never mind young Donald. Oh, you'll be in for a busy time, Grace. What with the baby and making plans for the wedding. Oh, Bob and Alice will be making their own wedding plans, Maggie. And when's it to be? Well, they haven't set a date. They're in no hurry. Well, that's a relief. What? Well, with Bob Taylor involved. I was wondering whether the wedding wouldn't have to be sooner than later. Maggie, what a thing to say. Well, that Bob Taylor's a bad lot. Alice won't have to seek her sorrows married to that one. And all the years I've known you, Maggie Ferguson, I've never known you use a good word where a bad one would do. So, Bob Taylor's getting the rough side of your tongue now, is he? Well, I have news for you. There's no rough side left. You've worn it smooth, talking rubbish all these years. About time somebody told you some home truths. I'm telling you the truth. Bob Taylor's a bad lot. And you're to be the judge of that. You, Maggie Ferguson, who grew up from a bitter, jealous young woman into a bitter, jealous old woman with nothing in her life to concern her except other people's business and, and a broken-down bus. Now, I think you've said just about enough already. Bob Taylor's a poacher. I saw him. I stood there and watched him take the money like the two-faced cheat he is. That's enough. I'm not interested in women's blethers. Bob Taylor's all right. Oh, I don't understand everything he does, like picking up grouse feathers or bits of wool off barbed wire fences. But that's just Bob. And I won't stand here and listen to you slander the best water bill that this estate ever had. Your tongue's got you into trouble before now. Take my advice. Curb it. That woman's a monster. Well, you've certainly given me uh, plenty to think about, Mrs. Cunningham. Thanks very much for all your advice. It's just a pity that that kind of advice should be needed at all, Jimmy. However, don't worry too much at the moment. Ah, well, thanks very much anyway. Right, I better go into the shop and see if I can give my mum a hand. I'll see you later on, Fiona. Bye, Jimmy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good morning, Mrs. Johnson. Hello. Mr. Johnson. Changeable day again. Are you over your cold? Yes, thank you. Good. Bye-bye. Poor Jimmy. He's got a lot in his mind at the moment. He's a bit churned up about his dad coming home. I'm sure he must be. His mother will be in quite a state, too. Mm. Isabel doesn't parade her anxieties, but she'll be feeling the strain terribly. I must give her a ring, see if she'd like a chat. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
She seems to be able to talk to you. Well, I hope so. Hello. <laughs> I've known and liked Isabel all my life. For the past few years, we've had a, a common problem. No husband. Yes. Has that been a problem, Mum? It can be at times. What's Brian Blair like? I don't really know him, Fiona. I only remember the Blair brothers as boys. I didn't like them very much then, I may say. They drove your grandfather wild. And we always used to make forays into his orchards. I haven't really seen anything of them since. Until David Blair came back. Yes. Jimmy seems to like his Uncle David. I think he's dangerous. Dangerous? To Glendariff. But why? All this Ministry of Defence business, all this secrecy. I don't like it. No, I think that the return of the Blair brothers to Glendariff could bring upsetting repercussions. Right. Straight home and a cup of tea. Mummy. It isn't just Jimmy who's got a lot in his mind at the moment, is it? Come on. Oh, hello there. Morning. Is Alan in? Deep in a meeting with Miss Stephen. Ah. No Lorna yet? No, she should have been in by now, but uh, her mother's having trouble. It's probably that. Of course. Well, tell her I called in, will oh, you? Before you dash off. Uh, I know I might be putting you in a professional spot, but, uh, well, Lorna's pretty worried about her mother. I just wonder if I could ask you how bad Mrs. Seaton is. Well, I don't normally discuss patients, but between you and me, I think Mrs. Seaton enjoys Lorna's attentions. Actually, I've been meaning to have a word with Lorna. She's overreacting to her mother's condition. So she's not as bad as Lorna thinks? Well, let's put it this way. Mrs. Seaton could be a lot more active than she's inclined to be. Or needs to be the way Lorna waits on her hand and foot. I see. And to let Lorna rush out and buy a brand new car just for the occasional spin round the lock was a wee bit naughty. Mrs. Seaton tends to feel sorry for herself. She should just see some of the people I visit every day. She'd realize how lucky she is. <laughs> well, would you speak to Lorna? That she'd listen to you. Next time I see her, okay? Thanks. Bye for now, then. Bye. I have given Bob Taylor my word. I will not go back on it. He intends to turn the Finlayson Croft into a love nest for his new bride, I hear. He can turn it into a hen house if he likes. I have promised him the lease, he will get it. There must be dozens more suitable cottages on the estate. Some may even have the picket fence and the roses round the door already. He will get the Finlayson Croft. I have promised it to him, and as far as I am concerned, that is all there is to it. <laughs> You're an incurable romantic. All this hairy-chested macho stuff about my word is my bond. Strictly B-movie time, you know. Business isn't done that way anymore. It is in Glendarroch. Then it'll have to change. I'll pursue the Finnis and Croft matter later. I think that's all for the moment. Oh, no, there were a couple of points. What with all the expansion, Scott stores, you know the supermarket chain, they're very interested in coming into the area. So? So, Blair's store would be the ideal site to expand. Growth and profitability, Alan. You can't possibly object to that, surely. Oh, and what am I going to do about those two children? What children? Jimmy Blair and the Cunningham girl. Well, what about them? Well, they're about to start playing down by the lockside. Oh, hardly a major revenue loss, I know, but anything that diverts money from the estate annoys me intensely. No. I really think it's high time I put an end to their little games. Don't you? I don't think that would be wise, Isabel. Jimmy and I will go down to Glasgow and bring Brian home. You stay here. I think I should go, David. I mean, of all people, he'll expect his wife to meet him. Well, don't let's go overboard in this. Stepping out of those prison gates after ten years is going to be emotional enough without having his entire family there to add to it. And apart from anything else, I think that your reunion with Brian should happen right here, 
within the privacy of your own four walls. Yes. Yes, it might be better. Look, look I'll, I'll leave it all up to you, David. I mean, you know best. What is it? What's wrong? David, I just don't know if I can face it. What? There's a stranger going to walk through that door. A man I loved, a man I lived with happily, the father of my son, but after ten years, he's a stranger. I mean... Do I still love him? Do I still want to live with him? <laughs> You'll feel fine as soon as you see him. Two terrified strangers are suddenly flung together after ten long years. In the eyes of the whole village, just waiting to pick up every word, every move we we'll make. Ah, you're exaggerating. You won't feel like strangers five minutes after Brian walks through that door. You know, I've never admitted this to anybody, not even Jimmy, but... putting a face on things for ten years has really taken it out of me, David. I, I just don't think I could cope with another ten. I'm sorry, this has all been welling up inside me. Well, I'm glad I was here. So am I. There's just one other thing I've got to get out of my system. For Jimmy's sake. And for my own. If I feel that Brian's coming back here isn't going to work, then I'm not going to suffer in silence. I'm going to do something about it. Even if it means turning him out onto the street. <laughs> 